Hello, my YouTube friends, and thanks for joining me for this week's Artwork Tour, where you will shortly see how I photographed and edited together the elements that make up this image gigantic. So this was a little bit different from my usual composites because it was created for the very specific purpose of doing a tutorial on showing people how to create giants, which you'll find in my Exposing Illusions course. But I think what's really interesting about this image is the way it's been toned. So it's a little bit different from what we normally talk about. And it's not kind of my usual composite. I haven't put the same level of detail into it as I might usually. However, I think you're going to find what I'm about to show a little bit interesting. So let's just turn off all these layers and start from the very beginning. Now, I knew I had a giant theme in mind and I knew that I wanted a person walking through a city. Problem is, I didn't have any city shots shot from above and to be able to create a giant, I couldn't really shoot from down low because it would be very difficult to get that same kind of perspective with a model. So I knew I needed to be up high. So for that reason, I hired a hotel room. And when I booked it, I said to them, look, I'm a photographer. I really want to take some great panoramic shots of Brisbane. Can you give me your best room? And they did, which I think is amazing. And it was so funny because when I would speak to staff at that hotel and told them my room number, they'd be all like, oh, you're in that room. So it's clearly got a reputation. Sadly, I don't remember what room number it was. I really wish I'd paid attention so I could book it next time. So what I did is took this photo. I took many, many photos. This is the one I ended up using. And so to begin, now this will make sense later, but I basically blurred the front of this image. So a couple of reasons for that. I wanted to mimic the effect of having a wider aperture so that some things are in focus and some things weren't. That was just really to get rid of the distractions of this area and to add just a little bit more of a storytelling feel. And it's kind of, I've used it sort of in a way to mimic the tilt shift effect where you blur parts of your image to make a real scene look like a toy. So they were the two things I was really thinking about, distractions and toy-like effect. Here I have simply darkened this building because I thought that stripe was too bright. I did a pretty terrible job of masking that in by the looks, but I, I have never noticed it. So I don't think you probably would. Then I've just brought down the exposure a bit. I thought it was too bright. Uh, even the sky's a little bit washed out on the right here. And then I just gave the whole thing a bit of a vignette just to draw that eye to the center. Next, we have our model. So she initially looked like this. Very different scenario. So I will pop her details and the details of the, of the ray gun makers below in the credits. But basically, I shot this in a studio against a red backdrop. So it was not shot for this purpose. Although as I was shooting it, I was thinking this would be a great look for like a 50 foot woman type thing. But that red was always going to be a challenge because, they're, you know, what backgrounds can you use that are red? So I could have just kept her on this background and that would be fine in itself. But, you know, being a compositor, I, I normally kind of get a bit bored with straight shots like this. I think she looks fantastic. So after I shot it, I always knew that I wanted this concept to work. I just needed that right angle for the city. But being in a red background came with challenges. And that's really what we're going to devote the rest of this video to is sort of seeing how I dealt with that. So she was masked away. You can still see there's a lot of red spill on her. And I cut out her hair separately just because it usually means a more involved job. So this, I believe, is where her hair came from. So I was very careful to more carefully cut her hair out. So you'll see before and after. And so it would have required a different form of selecting. And that's why I would have done that separately. And I tend to do that with hair. So then I have given her a glow. So presumably with the sun behind her, it would be hitting her and kind of reflecting and glowing off her, especially with that reflective outfit. So I have just carefully painted in some of this color over the top of her, set it to luminosity so it was only affecting the light, not the color, and brought down that opacity just a touch. And you can see that that's just giving a kiss of light to everything where I thought the light would be hitting if she was naturally in this scene. I then darkened her down just a touch. I think she was just glowing a little bit too brightly for this scene. Here is where I have removed the red. So let's take a look at this. I think 
I have selected the reds and pulled down the saturation. And then I have masked that just over her body, I think. So you can see her face and hair, actually not her hair, but her face still is a little bit red. But the reds drop out of her outfit. So that's a great little tip. You can just pull out one specific color. I mu probably masked it away from her body because we naturally have red in our skin tone. But that's how I dealt with that red issue. Then I've made her much more blue and that got rid of that red entirely. So she's now a bluey yellow color, which is a little bit too much at the moment, but I think it does fit better with that scene based on sort of the colors of the buildings. And it just dealt with that red problem entirely. So I've just played with the different curves. This has taken some saturation out. So you can see that sort of red and her face is now dropping out a little bit. And in the selective color, I've just played with, I, I would say, all of the different colors. And so this has really given her that warm yellow color that's coming from the rest of the scene. So now I think she's starting to fit quite well. I've brought up the exposure around her hair and face because obviously the light would probably be hitting there the most and it was just feeling a bit too contrasty and then darkened down the bottom of her because I really wanted to draw the eye to her face, not to her pants. Still going with her toning and it is the bulk of this image because she was shot on red and I did want to make her look like she fit. So I have now taken a yellow color and painted that over the top of her and dragged down the opacity to about 10%. So that has given her more of that warm color from the sun. Then I've added a spot of glow to her hair as if the sun was hitting there and sort of reflecting off it, which I think makes her fit that scene a little bit better. Darken down her pants and that gun a little bit more. There's still a little bit of a red line on that. Hopefully it pops out. This looks like I'm adding even more light just to the rim of her, her back rim. So let's see what that is doing. So it's really just this portion of her. So if the light was sort of bouncing off and reflecting. And then this one I think is a hue saturation where I reckon I've taken, oh look, see that little red spot off the gun has just gone. So I think I've just done a little bit more very specific color toning there as you can see from the mask. So now I think she's fitting quite well. The one thing that still bothers me about this image and forever will is that the top of her hair looks a bit flat. I wish I'd done a little bit more there. I'm not quite sure what I would have done because it is a wig and I showed you that I did cut out her hair quite carefully but I don't think the original had a lot of detail, probably because she was wearing that headband. So now I wanted her to be pointing at something. Otherwise, what's the story here? So I, you know, presumably if you've got a giant walking through a city, then you've probably got some kind of defense trying to sort that issue out. So I didn't have any pictures of sort of defense vehicles, but I, this is actually a stock image coming from Pixel Squid, which is my favorite place to get 3D rendered stock because you can actually rotate it into position. And again, I have brightened up the front of that just to, you know, that's what the light would be doing in this scene. I have given this scene more of a vignette because at this stage, I just thought, I don't know, the eye sort of feels like it's going everywhere. This really draws the eye to her, I feel. Next, I've added a very subtle photo filter that is just warming things up a touch because I don't really love this cool sky. Then even more, I've added more warmth there and more sort of directing the eye a little bit more. Here I have done a bit more toning, again, to make it warmer and darker and more contrasty. I'm starting to really like how it's looking now. I really like my images to be quite contrasty. Added more light into that sky because it, that blue was just really bothering me. So I've just warmed it up a little bit in the middle. I'm liking that a bit better. Then I've added even more of a blur to the front here. I possibly think we've gone now a little bit too far, but it is what it is. It really is drawing the eye to her now, getting rid of those distractions even more and creating that sort of tilt shift toy like depth. And finally, I've now just added some textures to tie everything together. So again, that texture is making things warmer and dark around the rim. This texture is just making her stand out a little bit more in the middle there. So you can see I've painted that in in a specific area. And finally, I have just made everything even more warm. And so that is the final image. So hopefully you found it useful to see how to deal with the challenge of editing together elements with different lighting and toning. And if you'd love to make more of this style of photographic art, then come by my website, creativephotofolk.com to learn more about my compositing courses. See you again soon.